Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is September the 6th, 2018. Let's talk about a very close fight. It's contentious. It's high risk. But I'm going to make a pick because this is a gambling site. It's Sean Porter against Danny Garcia. Garcia is the slight favorite. Let's talk about it. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just add to, as an aside, for those interested in profits, right? If you're about profits, I think you need to look at the crypto market right here. It's down indiscriminately because Goldman Sachs decided not to have a crypto desk, right? I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get these prices again the rest of the year. Bitcoin's below 6,500 as I make this video. Let's talk about the Sean Porter, Danny Garcia fight. Now, this is a dangerous video. How dangerous? I'm taking the underdog. I like Sean Porter. You're getting him at a plus 130. For me, it's just a matter of styles. Both guys are warriors. I'm not saying one guy is mentally tougher or wants it more than the other guy. But what I am saying is that Danny Garcia is a mid-range hooker. Right? He's a mid-range hooker. He wants a certain position in the ring relative to his opponent before he starts doling out punishment. So there have been fights where opponents who are interested in positioning, who make it a point to know where they are, people like Lamont Peterson, you remember that fight, right? The second half of that fight's an eye-opener. People like Ashley Theopane, people like Keith Thurman, have literally frozen Danny. Danny doesn't know what to do when you refuse to be at mid-range against him. Now, Sean Porter isn't a mid-range hooker. He's a different style entirely, one man's opinion. He's a quick strike in and out attacker. As I like to say, he's like Freddy Krueger, right? He's like one of these, you know, horror films where the guy's across the street. You say, okay, I'm safe. Suddenly the guy's right here in your face. Then it's a blitzkrieg. As quickly as the guy appears and, you know, hits you with shots, the guy can disappear. Right? Sean Porter by design isn't lingering around mid-range, right? He's not there to trade shots with you. Porter is really there to just come in, right? Rough you up, catch you on your back foot, blitzkrieg you, then leave. It's like a home invasion, right? They, they come in before you know what's going on, they're running through your house, then they're gone, right? I think the fact that Porter, by design, it's who he is, is always conscious about his spacing relative to his opponent. The fact that Porter, when he jumps in, isn't trying to jump in mid-range, he's trying to jump in short range to the point where the Kell Brook fight that Porter lost, Kell Brook could grab Porter. Porter was that close to him, right? I think that's going to bother Danny. You get too close to Danny, I think Danny's a guy who wants to back up, right? Danny's not a short range guy. Right? Let me also say, too, 
that Porter's height is going to help him a lot. I believe a lot of Danny Garcia's game, and watch his eyes. He'll look away, then he'll start to throw a hook. And when the hook is right here, you don't know if he's going to come up top with the hook or go low with the hook, right? You can't tell. And because Garcia's excellent at looking away, it's kind of like a no-look pass. You can't read his eyes. So that trips up taller fighters, right? They're in front of him. They don't know where he's going with the shot. You only have a millisecond to block it. If you go like this to block the shot and Danny's throwing it in your rib area, you're going to get hurt. But the thing with Porter is Porter is shorter and Porter can come in low. In other words, Danny doesn't have a choice if Porter comes in low, bent at the waist, of thinking, do I hit him high or hit him low? Because Porter, by design, is going to collapse the angles. In other words, Porter's not standing upright where I'm thinking, do I hit him here? Do I hit him here? No, Porter's bent and Porter's jumping in low. So Danny loses a big part of his effectiveness. That, you know, where's the punch going type thing. Porter's going to close the window on it. Right? Porter's going to come in low. He's going to have a hand like this. It's going to smother the angles on Danny Garcia. Let me say, too, Garcia's a counterpuncher. Right, Porter, again, by design, and it's a tribute to Porter and his team. Porter, by design, is a guy who faints. Right, faints throw off counter punchers. In other words, if, if Porter's there and he comes in and he's fainting like he's going to come in, a counter puncher is going to say, okay, well, he's throwing a punch, let me counter here. The problem is Porter's fainting the punch. He's not actually throwing it. I believe because of Porter, Porter's change of tempo, that's going to give a counterpuncher like Danny Garcia, who wants to counterpunch you at mid-range, all kinds of problems. Right? This isn't the Eric Morales fight. This isn't a guy who's going to be in front of him. Right? Who Danny can, Danny's a mid range hooker. Danny does have a straight right hand. Who Danny can set up. Now, this is going to be a guy who's moving, like Lamont Peterson did the second half of that fight. Only Porter's going to do it early. This is going to be a guy who's moving, who's sudden. Porter's nickname shouldn't be Showtime Sean Porter. In my opinion, it should be Sudden Sean Porter. You remember how he stops Paulie Malinaji, right? Malinaji, very slick fighter, very slick. But Porter was outside. Then Porter leaps in with the shot, catches Malinaji. Then, of course, Porter stays for dinner. Right, Malinaji, who's a guy who likes to hit you with a jab, likes to set you up, never got a chance to set the table. I believe the same thing is going to happen here. Right, it's a dangerous fight to bet on. It's not for the timid. Right, you're not getting great odds. The odds are close. This is the mild underdog. Right, but based on styles, this fight to me seems to belong to Sean Porter. Right, let me just say too, it was interesting. I thought Keith Thurman 
look better against Danny Garcia than he did Sean Porter. Right? Porter gets Garcia, excuse me, Porter gets Thurman on his back foot. Now, I believe Keith Thurman, and this is subject to discussion, I believe Keith Thurman hits harder and throws straighter punches than does Danny Garcia. Right? I believe Thurman's a bit more unpredictable. So there are moments in that fight where Porter's outside, Porter then jumps inside, and then gets hit with some bombs by Keith Thurman. Some bombs. Right? You saw Porter's chin. It's sturdy. In my opinion, you also saw Keith Thurman in trouble. Now, we could debate who won that fight. That fight could have gone either way. In fairness to Keith Thurman, the decision's not a robbery. Right? Thurman does land some great punches. But I didn't see Thurman have the comfort level he had against Danny Garcia. In other words, Thurman against Garcia, Thurman comes out, owns that first round against Danny Garcia. I didn't see that in the Thurman-Sean Porter fight. He owns that first round. When Thurman has his stamina, I thought Thurman was qualitatively better than Danny. Now, I'll agree. Danny makes a comeback in the fight. Right? No question about it. But I thought Thurman was cruising at 30,000 feet for a stretch of that Danny Garcia fight. I thought Thurman was starting to get comfortable. He looked like a guy sitting in his living room, taking off his slippers, enjoying the TV remote there for a while against Danny Garcia. One man's opinion. Against Sean Porter, because Porter is sudden, because the angles are collapsed, because Porter can change the pace, because Porter can hit you from distance. Thurman never looked that comfortable to me. It looked like he was under fire, right? I think Sean Porter, who, let's remember, beat Adrian Broner, right? I think Sean Porter wins this. I think he's a more complicated fighter, more unpredictable fighter than Danny Garcia. I'll agree. Danny Garcia has some advanced boxing skills. But let me just say this. Often a guy with advanced boxing skills has a problem when you're not there to box him. And Sean Porter is going to try to turn this not into a boxing match, but into an episodic type of contest. In other words, you got three-minute rounds. I believe Porter's going to be outside. He's not going to engage Danny Garcia. I think Garcia is going to go hunting for him, but Garcia is not a guy who runs across the ring, right? He's not prime Mike Tyson. So I believe Garcia is going to leisurely try to hunt him down because Garcia needs for the stars to align. He needs for Porter to be mid-range. Porter's not going to be mid-range. Then Porter is going to, when Garcia doesn't expect it, leap inside, throw some shots, pivot, back, back out. Right? Danny's going to be turning. Then I think Porter's going to jump back in. In other words, the round is not going to be three minutes of a chess match. Rather, what it's going to be is Sean Porter using his legs, moving around the ring, picking, let's say, five times to jump in, throw a combination, land some shots on Danny Garcia. And that kind of stop-and-go type match, I think Sean Porter takes it. That's how I see it.
Let me hear from you because the line is close. It's going to be hard to hedge this, right? If your casino has a more staggered line, the hedge I would consider is Danny Garcia by KO because Sean Porter at times does get reckless when he jumps in. And there are moments in the Keith Thurman fight where Sean Porter jumps in and then gets hit flush and stood up. Right? That's how I see it. I expect the Porter victory. I'll concede Danny Garcia has a puncher's chance in this one. I know that's not how the fight is priced in Vegas. We're swimming against the tide here. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. If there is a different scenario that you see playing out, right? If you have a different interaction between the two guys, then I hope you leave that in the comment section to this video. Let me say this too. Like Alexander Povetkin, who, by the way, I believe is going to give Joshua all he could handle. Like Alexander Povetkin learned when he fought Vladimir Klitschko, that he couldn't be too obvious in jumping inside. Because he jumps inside and Klitschko grabs him repeatedly in that fight. Right? I believe that Sean Porter learned that when he fought Kel Brook. Same type thing, right? Guy's jumping in. He's trying to be episodic. The other guy's waiting for him and knows how to tie him up. So I believe you're going to see Porter, when he jumps inside, do things not to get tied up. In other words, he can jump inside. I know legally it's a little bit dodgy, but he could jump inside and have a hand between him and Danny Garcia, right? He can jump inside at angles. In other words, don't jump here where I can grab you. Jump over here. Right? Come in low where I can't grab you, right? Experience often is the best teacher. I think Sean Porter is underrated. I'll agree. He had a rough go of it against Kell Brook. He lost to Keith Thurman. Right? But style-wise, style-wise, I'll tell you what. I think he has a chance to really shake things up in the division, especially with Keith Thurman taking a while to come back from injury. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.